Every once in a while, I like to stop and imagine something that makes me happy. But then I remember this game exists, and it kind of just kills the mood. Mario Kart! Where would we be without it? Probably hell. There's so many of these games, and they're all extremely fun to whip out at parties. Now with me, I couldn't get a party together to save my life. So I go for the single player offerings in these games. Now some might say, well, that's rather boring, sad, and lonely. I get it. But honestly, I still enjoy going for these games trying to get the gold in every cup. I've played these games for hundreds of hours, and they never get old. The formula of going around in a circle three times should get boring, but because of the charm and great track design that these games have, it never does, especially with friends. Sadly, the only one I've ever been able to play with friends is 8 because I feel like I'd scare them away if I tried to get them to remember the early 2000s. And unlike most repetitive franchises, I have a genuine reason to go back to each of them. I go back to 64 for the battle mode, Double Dash for the unique gameplay, and Alright, who invited this guy? Super Mario Kart! I've heard worse ideas. At the time of its release, the racing genre wasn't as versatile as it is today. Back then, you only had games like F-Zero or Excitebike, but nowadays I think companies are just pumping out racing games to be funny. So when this game was released, it was met with immediate critical acclaim because of its accessible gameplay and the fact that it was the first competently made racing game that could appeal to pretty much anyone. Yeah, there was F-Zero, but it didn't have any form of multiplayer whatsoever and it was also a little too hardcore for many to immediately grasp onto it. Super Mario Kart used the SNES's 3D capabilities in a great way. You could play it with friends, and best of all, it was Mario, so it had the point of brand recognition going for it as well. This was a great game at the time of its release, but welcome to the future where nobody cares about this game anymore. You can still see people talking about how SNES classics like Super Mario World or Yoshi's Island are incredible games that still hold up today. But that same praise doesn't apply to Super Mario Kart. I mean, there could be someone out there who does think this game is the greatest thing ever, but I've yet to find one. And personally, I've always just had a bit of a problem with this game. I start playing, get 20 minutes into it, and then leave it on the shelf for the next few months. I never got into this game, and I don't know if that's because of the game's old age, or because I'm too young. But I will admit that this game absolutely defined the racing genre, and while I don't entirely enjoy it, I have a ton of respect for it, but I think it suffers from being the first game in the series, as well as the fact that there isn't much of a reason to go back to it. But up until the past year or so, I didn't own the original copy of the game on the Super NES. Instead, my first experience with it was on the SNES Classic, where I played it for 20 minutes, tried to put it on the shelf, realized it doesn't fit, and then I went back to playing Super Mario World. But a couple of years later, I got another chance to play it on the Nintendo Switch Online service, repeat the process. Maybe it's just me, but I have a problem with playing a game with something that isn't the original hardware. I always go, well, I'll just wait until I get the original version, and then I'd wake up three years later saying, this is great, why didn't I start playing this three years ago? So maybe the same will apply to this game. This is Super Mario Kart for the SNES. That's a title screen, alright. And a weird one at that. If there was a board meeting for this, it would just be a bunch of five-year-olds. Push B! Timmy, I already know how to play the game. The two of them just started playing tic-tac-toe on the ground. I will say though, in the several ways the characters openly harass each other, it is a welcome addition. And after that, we have the option to choose from three different difficulties. 50cc, 100cc, and 150cc. These all determine your speed when playing the game, and I feel that 100cc is just right for this game. When I'm playing 50cc, I feel like I'm going to get called out for playing on the easiest difficulty. And with a 150cc, I don't want to make a fool of myself. So that's my difficulty of choice, but what about my character? Mario's too basic. No. Yoshi's just a bit too Yoshi for me. I can't play as Bowser, he's the bad guy. Koopa Troop has been holding his breath for 20 minutes, he doesn't look too good. And Toad looks like he's seen a few things. But what about Donkey Kong Jr.? Yeah, my favorite bad Mario Kart character. He made a playable appearance in this game, and I might not have been alive, but I don't think people in 1992 were like, yeah, I want to see him violate traffic laws. And it's also a bit weird considering that they didn't just use regular old Donkey Kong. However, the modern Donkey Kong design wasn't a thing until the release of Donkey Kong Country two years later, so that might have something to do with it. But then again, Donkey Kong Jr. never got a modern character design. He didn't live for that long. I'll stick with Luigi. 
Then I have to choose what cub in the game I want to torture myself through. Mushroom, Flower, and Star are unlocked right from the start, with Special being unlocked after all the previous cups are beaten. And let's talk about the tracks here! This game has it all, from generic racing track to iBurner 9000. But the thing is, Super Mario Kart doesn't really have much in the way of actual tracks. No, instead, there are more so themes of tracks being repeated several times. These tracks do have different layouts from each other, but if you told me to find the difference between this track and this track, I'm going to have to squint. And this honestly makes all the cups blend into each other. There's no reason I prefer Flower Cup to Mushroom Cup, because to me, they look the same. But I might as well talk about the track themes themselves and how they all stand up to each other. Mario Circuit is fine for being home to the first track in the series, but nothing that interesting happens here. It's just a generic racing track. So, in my lack of consideration for this track, I will respectfully look away. Donut Plains is inoffensive, but I got tired of talking about it before I started talking about it. Ghost Valley is pretty neat, it's the only one that doesn't make me go partially blind. But there are a bunch of holes in the walls that get rather annoying, so... Uh... It gets a pass from me. Bowser's Castle has these small sections where you can go up on these ramps to jump over some gaps, and they're quite fun. But every once in a while, yeah, that happens. But even though that is annoying, it's nothing compared to Vanilla Lake. This theme might be home to some of the worst tracks the series has ever seen. When playing it on a modern day console, it looks fine, but my god is it rough on the original SNES. I don't know how to describe it, but everything just looks like a visual blur. Everything blends into each other, and I can't tell the difference between the ground and the ice blocks. And even if I play on the Nintendo Switch Online service, it still doesn't help, because there are just too many ice blocks. Only the later laps in these races are tolerable. But even then, when you do run into an ice block, in the last lap, say hello to second place, because the CPU has almost no problem driving right past them and you! And that's all I have to say about Vanilla Lake. Koopa Troopa Beach is probably the best one of the bunch. I've always found the music so relaxing, and the overall vibe of the level is extremely pleasant. Although, it does still hurt a bit to look at the water, but it's better than this. Choco Island! Okay, so apparently I have to wear these now. And lastly, Rainbow Road is a spectacle. It only appears once in the game, and it's a great refresher after I shovel my way through all of that. But those were just the tracks. What about the items? I've seen cavemen more advanced than this. Compared to the later games in the series, the items in this game aren't really anything to write home about. The mushroom is fine, but because of the smallness and limiting nature of the tracks, I have a hard time utilizing it in a way where I don't slam into a wall. The green shells and bananas are almost completely useless as I rarely see anybody get hit by them. The coin? Well, I didn't know anything. In actuality, the coins increase your speed, but it's barely a 1% increase, so this item is mostly just there to make you mad that you didn't get something better, like a red shell. But even the red shell isn't very good in this game, because half the time, it either misses the racer, or hits an obstacle on the road. Now for the actual useful items, lightning shrinks and slows down every player in front of you, but you have to be really far behind to get your hands on it. Same goes for the star, but I haven't been able to snag it in a high place before. It just doesn't happen often. And what the star does is pretty good. You go a bit faster when using it, and you can demolish any opponent that stands in your way. The boo only appears in the game's battle mode, and it turns you invisible, which makes you immune to common attacks. It also lets you steal items from your enemies. Take that! The last item is the feather, and this is one of the neatest Mario Kart items in terms of obscurity. It only appeared in this game in the battle mode of 8 Deluxe, and I understand why. It's because this item is bad. You know I at least angered one of the fan club members. I understand why it exists. There are some shortcuts in the game that require the use of it, and these skip large portions of the track. But I always feel like I get the item at the wrong times. Most of the time when I get it, I don't have a use for it, so I usually end up wasting it. I don't hate this item, I just never want it. And now that I'm finally done talking about the tracks, and the items, I think I should move on to talking about what you mainly do in the Grand Prix, along with all of its odd quirks and structures. But first, I'm gonna have to play it.
I hope I don't experience anything too bad. Grand Prix was a thing that existed in this game. And I'm just glad I took some breaks to play Double Dash, because playing through the Grand Prix was absolutely miserable. Instead of four races per cup, there are five of them. But something even worse than that is that there are five laps on each race. Now, I get why they did this. They wanted to increase the playtime of the game, because the tracks in this game are smaller than a nickel. But I think they should have made the tracks a bit bigger instead, because even though the extending lap count makes the tracks longer, it just makes them feel very repetitive in a game with already repetitive track design. And expanding the track size could have greatly reduced the amount of trouble you have to go through while making a tight turn. Speaking of which, drifting! It wouldn't be Mario Kart without it. In Mario Kart nowadays, you can rough up that shoulder button and control stick in order to get a quick boost of speed. It feels great to pull off and it makes going through the tracks even more fun than they already are. So how's Super Mario Kart's drifting? Take this and hit me as hard as you can. Drifting in this game isn't fun. It feels more like I'm skidding than drifting. And the track design doesn't really let you use it all too often. And while there are extremely tight corners, I find it better to slow down compared to drifting. So these tracks are repetitive, too small, and not fun to drift on. What other great inclusion does the Grand Prix add? Cheating. Rubber banding AI is the term as it's known, and it means that no matter how far you are ahead of the CPUs, They'll be able to catch up to you no matter what, and that's unfair enough as it is, but the CPUs also have items that you just flat out can't use. The Poison Mushroom, Fireball, and Egg are all completely inaccessible to the average player, but the CPUs are able to use them all of the time, and I have to say that the amount of times I've been pelted by eggs makes me scared every time I open the refrigerator. All of this makes playing for the Grand Prix rather stressful, and while it doesn't offer anything too difficult, I always know there's a chance I can get screwed over in a matter of seconds. And it isn't like Mario Party where the unfairness of the game adds to the fun, it's just being unfair for the sake of being unfair. But unlike the Grand Prix, the battle mode has a level of unfairness that I live for. You start the game with three balloons that are just begging to be popped. And while your opponent stands still for some reason, you get the chance to nuke them with items. And this mode is really fun to play. The randomness of the items really plays into the chaos. And the only real gripe I have with the mode this is the items. Because they aren't as crazy as they are in later titles, the battle mode in later games are better by default. Never mind. But while I do love the battle mode here, it feels a bit primitive. And that's what the main problem of the game comes down to. It's age. Everything done here was phenomenal for the time, and I respect the game for everything that it did. It set the basis for the racing genre, and it started the incredible series of Mario Kart. But it's really hard to go back to these days. It tried to push the limits of what the SNES was capable of, and while it was admirable, the game suffers because of it. I now understand why games like Super Mario World and Yoshi's Island haven't lost their acclaim. They don't try to do more than they actually can, and they still provide great experiences within their limitations. Super Mario Kart is worse than all of its sequels, because the consoles the sequels were on were more capable of providing a competent experience. And don't take that as me absolutely hating this game, I just feel like it bit off a bit more than it could chew. So that was Super Mario Kart, and overall I didn't think it was too great, but what about its sequel on the N64? Mario Kart 64! I just hope it doesn't come off my shelf and enslave the planet, doing the world to fall into the control of chaos and flames. Well that was unexpected.